Good morning. It's the next day. It's a little bit past 11. The car is charged to 100% and we're ready to go. <laughs> Covered in leaves from the fall making itself known. Um, <clears throat> here we have a charge ham's halo. Uh, we only had it for a few weeks but once we've had it uh, a bit longer and I know more probably gonna get a review on that but it's supposed to withstand Nordic climate and snow and rain and everything but we're gonna get a cover uh, to put over it. Trailer is over here, it's now empty. Um, everything else is same, but I'm kind of curious now. Uh, I looked at the weather and we're going to be driving uh, in rain almost the entire way, but comparing this 100% uh, drive and how much range we get out of it compared to the first leg from Oslo uh, a few days ago. Uh, I see here that the roof box is misaligned as well. I'll fix that one day. <laughs> Not now. <clears throat> uh, this is the cabin. Uh, just spent a lovely night here. It's so quiet, so dark. Uh, but now I need to spend 10 or so hours to get back to Oslo. So uh, we better hit the road or I'm gonna drive the majority of the trip in darkness. <laughs> okay, it bothered me a bit too much. So I realigned the, the roof box. That looks not perfect, but better. Okay, now let's go. So the trip planner uh, wanted our first charging stop to be in Norrköping with 62% arrival. Let's see, right now we should probably be able to drive double that distance. Oh, so maybe we can't make it to Kristinehamn without charging, is that? I think a different path as well. All right, but this is fine. 260 kilometers. Hmm. In rain. I don't think so, but I think there is a supercharger in Linköping. Yeah. So if we get to Linköping and we realize um, we don't have enough juice to make it all the way to Kristinehamn up there, we will just pop up a bit so we can make it to Kristinehamn, and then hopefully we can make it through this entire stretch here. It's going to be small roads, I think, primar primarily. A uh, short stint on E4 and then back on these kind of back roady <coughs> type roads, but that's fine. We're only driving 80, 85 anyway. Um, all right, uh, let's go. You can't see my pin. There we go. Trailer looking good. No random brakes applied. Let's see if we get rid of these leaves with some speed. And let's get going. or so and I think when we left we had an estimated arrival of 18% in Kisinhamn. Uh, it's been bouncing up and down a bit going anywhere from 4 to 16% but it seems to have settled in there around 7 or 8% but it keeps kind of creeping down so we'll see we have roughly another hour uh, to lean shopping where our potential bailout charging stop is. Um, now I'm curious I really hope we can make it to Kisinhamn uh, driving 250 260 kilometers on on the full charge with the trailer um so we'll see yeah just jump down to six percent um hmm, interesting i may end up uh hyper -miling a bit i have lowered the speed it's 70 here so going 74 instead of 80 as most people would uh, with the trailer and beautiful driving conditions uh, the colors are lovely uh, even though the weather is not so lovely. Um, so let's see where we end up on this trip. Just jumped up to 80, so we need to increase the speed a bit, so I need my hand. Um, Oakley Doke, see you.
There is a lot happening right now. It estimates a 4% arrival. It keeps going back and forth between stay below 80 km per hour to reach destination and the red message with uh, charging needed. Um, and also the, the trip uh, projection graph. Let's see if I can get it out for you. Uh, it's really struggling. Oopsie. Sorry, car. Uh, the trip projection is really struggling. You see the orange or the, the solid line is what it estimated to begin with. And then the orange line is the actual <laughs> projection now that it realized we have roof box, trailer, it's raining. Um, and we don't really have uh, lots of things doing us any favors in terms of lower consumption or longer range. Uh, 3.5 estimated in Kristinehamn. We'll see if this changes as we move along. But I don't think so. I think we'll simply have to bail out and charge a little bit in, uh, in shopping. And there are a lot of restaurants around the charging in shopping as well. So mm, might as well make it a longer stop. We'll see. Still raining, still beautiful colors. Just, just keeping on driving. The decision has been made. We're going to stop in Lean Shopping. Uh, the car started to claim around the two percent arrival in Kristinehamn. And <clears throat> if I was if I was just driving with the car or just the car in the roof box, uh, I'd probably push it. Uh, but with the with the trailer uh, and the increased consumption, that means plus the rain. I don't want to push it too uh, low into into the pack um, with you know pulling a trailer and all of that. So. Um, I just stopped at the gas station, got some food, so I don't have to stop and eat in Lean Shopping. I'm just going to top up maybe 10%, you know, just to add some buffer, and then we're going to uh, head on up to Tvisina. So it's not going to affect our trip too much. Uh, it's preconditioning now, so we're going to get a bit higher consumption. Who cares? Um, I'm just doing a <clears throat> really quick top up. So again, who cares? And I think, if I remember correctly, all of those stalls are trailer friendly. <clears throat> so. Uh, See, feels like a good plan. See you there. So now I'm really confused. After putting in the supercharger and link chirping uh, and started reconditioning the battery and everything, um, I was just like, hmm, what? I wonder if it recalculates if I put in Christine Hamn again. And now it claims a 12% arrival. Um, I think we should push it. Yeah, we should. Uh, I'm just going to pull over real quick uh, at some point just to look to make sure that we have at least one bailout charger between uh, Lin Chöping and Kisina Hamn if we need to because I know we're driving through kind of no man's land in there or not no man's land but uh, it's not infrastructurally put up in a way where I would expect to find uh, high power chargers so uh, I don't know I'll keep an, keep an eye on this for a bit uh, and we'll see what we do in probably 10 minutes or so. Uh, this is interesting. I just stopped to do some quick shopping and we didn't charge in Lin Shopping. We're aiming for Christine Ham and there are actually quite a few uh, potential bailout spots uh, on the way. I was pretty surprised to see the, the map on PlugShare, how many, uh, both like 50 and 100 kilowatt and, and type 2 chargers there are uh, in these sort of rural roads uh, in like mid-south Sweden. Uh, but now it claims 1%, oh, now it jumped up to 3%. I don't know why it's so confused. If it's um, the new weather calculation that was added a few updates ago or if it has to do with the uh, speed limits or whatever it might be. Oh, now the warning disappeared. <laughs> uh, but what I'm going to do is to cancel this navigation uh, and see if it makes a difference if I navigate to Kristinehamn again. If it has something to do with something. I don't know. So uh, bear with me for a second. So we re-navigated. It's calculating. And now it's a 6%. What the heck? All right, we'll, <laughs> we'll see if we make it or not. Um, I'll keep you posted along the way. Uh, still driving in rain, of course. So higher consumption 
and the colors are still lovely. Um, but if we make it to Kristinehamn, we made almost 260 kilometers, I think, uh, on a full charge in rain with trailer with roof box. Um, and color me impressed if that happens. Closer and closer to Kristinehamn, 2% arrival projected, we have another 33 kilometers, 12% state of charge. Uh, I checked, we have one more point if we need to bail out in Degefors. <sighs> the rational portion of me feels like, yes, we should bail out uh, and make sure we don't get stuck somewhere <laughs> with an empty battery. Uh, there is another part of me that's kind of excited now because it seems like we can make it to Kristinehamn. And I have a friend who lives nearby who can probably uh, tow me if I have to. Um, or I'll simply just drop the, the trailer somewhere and drive the last few kilometers if I have to. So I think we're going to skip the Egefors. We're going to keep going for Kristinehamn. Uh, still raining, of course. Still beautiful colors. And I'm just curious if, if we had dry roads uh, and a bit warmer weather, what, what the consumption would look like. Currently we're hovering around 250 watt hours per kilometer for this, or since the last charge at the cabin. Uh, so very impressed so far. And 2% arrival, I'll keep an eye out on the dotted lines here. If we start losing power, then we know we're starting to be in real trouble, uh, depending on how well calibrated my BMS is. So uh, keep your fingers crossed, or so either I'll see you on the side of the road with no state of charge, or I'll see you at the supercharger in Kristina. We passed the Egefors, 23 kilometers to go. It keeps jumping up and down between 1 and 2% arrival. The only thing that scares me a bit is that I looked uh, in the, what do you call it, the energy graph stuff, travel trip data, uh, and it looks like at the very end there is a fairly steep hill that I need to go up uh, before I get to the charger and that can be hmm, challenging with low state of charge uh, especially if we start getting uh, less power output uh, with the trailer so if that becomes a problem I'm just gonna have to unhook it before the hill or somewhere around there and go to the charger with just the car and come back and pick up the, the trailer I hope I don't have to uh, since it's raining and the connector for trailers on the Model 3 is below the car, not on the rear, which sucks. Uh, so, uh, you know, we keep having our fingers crossed, staying a bit below the speed limit here. Uh, and hopefully we make it. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. The power uh, limitation has started to creep in and I've uh, turned off cruise control because I want to be able to modulate with my foot how much juice we're giving it to spare the battery a little bit. So I try to accelerate on the downhill uh, and allow myself to decelerate on the uphill to keep the, uh, the power use as little as possible. Uh, yeah, still scary. Another 11 kilometers to go. I think we'll make it. I hope we'll make it. <laughs> down to 2%. Cruise control is on because it's a fairly flat road for now. Uh, 5.8 kilometers. And the power creep, the power uh, limit hasn't gone very far. So I'm starting to feel confident that we'll make it. Maybe famous last words, maybe I'm correct. Now it claims a 0% arrival. Shit! keep you with me here for good luck. Uh, still plenty of power. I think this is the uphill that uh, was showing in the estimation. Oh no, the power comes up. The power limit is creeping down. This should be fine. It's fine. One kilometer, one percent. No problem. 
Yes. Yes. Inga problem, as we say in Swedish. 700 meters. <laughs> Why aren't my wipers working? There we go. Ah! Still lots of power. Just one more left turn. Let's see if the, the trailer friendly stalls are hogged this time. Wouldn't be surprised if they are. Turn signal on. You see the McDonald's sign on the left? That's where the charger is. Still plenty of power. And there is no one here, so we can just roll on through. There we go. And there we have them. And there are all the trailer friendly stalls are available. Nice. So I guess we'll take the one at the far end here. <laughs> We're down to zero percent now. Jesus. Let's not do this again. This is a bit too much fun, I think. And we'll take this one. There we go. Zero percent. Put the car in park. The trip. Let's see. Since last charge. 267 kilometers. 245 watt hours per kilometer with trailer and roof box. That's insane. Ooh, let's get plugged in so uh, it doesn't die on the spot here. A journey we went on going all the way from the cabin to Christina Hamn. Good job. I call my car Snutis. So good job Snutis. Uh, I'm gonna go find the restroom and then we're gonna figure out what our next stop uh, is gonna be. Let's see do we still have the trip data here? Yeah so you can see like every time I recalculated it um, thought that we could make it and then eventually the, the purple or the orange line started dropping and dropping and every time it was the driving. So somehow, even though we were driving under the same conditions, with the same load, similar speeds all the time, uh, the car didn't adapt, which is kind of kind of strange, I think. But uh, we made it nonetheless. Uh, we're gonna be creeping up towards 250 kilowatts here, here eventually, I think. Whew. There we go. After 11 minutes of charging, we're at 44% already. Got some coffee, filled up my water, and got an apple pie from McDonald's. Let's figure out what our next uh, stop should be. So let's just tap in Oslo. And see what kind of suggestions we get. You wanna make two charging stops, really? That feels a bit overkill. Let's see, that's a version two. Version 2, version 2, what the heck, <laughs> where are all the version 3s on this road? Okay, there are none. Um, I think Tuxfors is probably a good bet. Uh, let's remove all the charging stops. Oh, sorry, pointing the camera into the sky. <laughs> I think Tuxfors is good enough, it's like a two hour drive. And then we can do our last top up in Norway where it's actually cheaper. Oh, wait, I haven't seen this before. Different time frames, different prices. Cool. So it's not cheaper anymore. Ah, Tesla. What's the price over here? 790. So, oh, focus. Uh, we might as well charge enough at Texforce to make it all the way home after that. So um, we'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, estimated 0%, let's not do that again. We'll probably give it a 15% buffer or so. So we'll charge up to 65% and then we'll get on the road again. In the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy coffee and apple pie. We're done charging. So time to get back on the road now. Two 
Six Fors, an hour and 56 minutes. So, I don't know what's up with the trip estimations today. Uh, it estimated initially a, I think it was 17 or 18 percent arrival in Texfors. Now it's down to 4 percent. And I don't want to do another one of those uh, zero percent arrivals. So I'm actually going to charge in Grums uh, in just 20 minutes or so, uh, just to top up to make it to Texfors. This is weird because it was uh, way better, if I remember correctly, when I was driving the other direction with a, with a full trailer and more load. Uh, and during similar weather conditions. So not really sure what's going on here, uh, why the car doesn't learn, uh, because every time I look at the efficiency stats, it's the driving that's the deviation, and I'm driving at the same speed uh, with the same car, maybe straightening the roof box uh, made it consume a few percent more, <laughs> but that's highly unlikely. So um, we're just gonna get off the road in Grums, pop up a bit, and then we'll keep going towards Texfors, uh, and we'll just kind of do some uh, charger jumping on our way heading back to Oslo. We're plugged in and charging in Grums. Um, I guess I'll have to start charging for 20% buffers now, uh, which is frustrating. So let's see what it says to Texfors. 10%, all right, we'll uh, get 10% here up to 50 and then we'll keep going, or I'll just keep charging as long as we have 150 kilowatts. Whichever comes first, dropping below 150 or 50 percent. Yeah, still raining. Pretty boring supercharger here. You have some stuff across the road, uh, like a Burger King and a gas station. Uh, but on this side, it's just like a gym and some some other stuff. So not the best location, but it has a lot of stores uh, and a lot of trailer friendly ones. It's been a whole three, four minutes <laughs> and we're at 50%. So just going to give it uh, another minute or so and then I'm going to unplug and drive towards Texas. It's getting dark, it's raining, it's one of those nights again. On Thursday I'm actually going to go and get the LED bar installed now that the darkness is coming so that I can see something because I have the older, not so great headlights. Sadly, uh, my model was delivered with all the facelift stuff like heat pump and uh, the wireless chargers down here etc but I didn't get the refreshed uh, headlights sadly so uh, LED bar installation Thursday looking forward to it Supercharger in Texas, only four minutes to go. Uh, got some construction work here, and again, the estimation was way off. Uh, it estimated, I think, 22% arrival, and uh, now it says 10. So, um, it's got to be mindful of that. And here we got some of that lovely, lovely construction. Um, I don't I can't recall being at the Texas charger in a long time, so uh, I'll have to take a look and see what it looks like because I honestly can't remember. Just thought I had my brights on. <laughs> um, yeah, see you at the charger. So here it is, the Texas supercharger, right next to my McDonald's again. Um, I think I've been here once, a long time ago, uh, but it's nice. All of them are trailer friendly, sadly just the version 2, but uh, it's enough for us to juice up and hit the road, hopefully for the last time. I think I'm gonna find some place to eat here. And then we're gonna head to where I rented the trailer, drop that off, and then heading home. So let's get plugged in and charging. Do the old version two handles. Oops, didn't sound too good. And off we go. I just want to make sure I'm getting decent speeds before I walk away from the car and turn off the darn vipers. 
come on. There we go. Contactor is clicking. Ramping up a bit. And let's just see how much we need anyway. So, 16, okay. So we need 26 to get there, plus the 20% buffer. 46, so probably I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna have to drive home, so I'm probably gonna go up to 65, 70%. But not if we only get 66 kilowatts. What's happening? I just stuck at 66, 67 kilowatts, so swap to another stall here, we'll see if that helps. Come on. We got the clicks. Ramp up. Want 140. There we go. So it's actually always good to just take a few seconds to look at your charging speeds before you run away from your car. Uh, 108 is not great. I don't know if this is 120 or 150 kilowatt installation. I think it's at 150 on the map. Uh, but we're just going to let this ramp up. I'm going to go and find some food. And then we're going to hop back on the road for the last stretch of this very, very long road trip. The last leg. Uh, let's see. Since last charge. No, we reset it because we plugged in and plugged back out. So the total trip so far, 1,305 kilometers, 265 watt hours per kilometer consumption. Doing great so far, but I really need some food and a bathroom. We just stopped charging and went all the way to 77%. I went and had some food at McDonald's um, and I wanted some buffer so I could make it all the way home and hopefully not have to charge another time. <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, given the <laughs> how bad the trip estimations have been so far uh, on the way back at least so uh, let's just hop on the road and start driving Tesla Vision was, was implemented is that the longest follow distance is not very long anymore. So I was behind that car that just turned off. Uh, we were both driving around 100 kilometers per hour. Um, and I was staying roughly a second and a half behind him on the, on the highest setting. Um, I think, in Sweden at least, I think, so people will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that um, the minimum in Sweden is uh, three seconds. Anything else is a, is a findable offense uh, to keep your distance. I need to double check or correct me in the comments. Uh, but the fact that putting it on seven in the Tesla still just keeps me like a second and a half behind someone at speeds that are that high uh, is simply not safe. So I think where we're at right now with the autopilot with forced auto high beams engaged, uh, Tesla vision being, you know, premature rollout from Tesla uh, and the follow distance being that short, I, I don't feel confident or safe using it at the moment really. I'd rather just use uh, the automatic cruise control and uh, drive manually or steer manually, uh, which sounds like a very privileged thing to say, but uh, when you're driving long road trips, it's so nice to engage autopilot and just kind of relax. It really gives you some extra breathing room in your, in your brain uh, and I tend to arrive much more relaxed. But with that said, uh, we're just a few minutes from home. Once we get there, I'm gonna look at the trip stats. Uh, we're gonna see how many kilometers we drove in total, consumption, etc. And the only deviation really is this last stretch for, I don't know, it's like 10, 15 minutes, a few kilometers driving without the, the trailer. So it's not gonna affect our total consumption or anything too much. I'm just really tired. I wanna wrap things up. Uh, I'm gonna 
go inside, take a hot shower and go to bed almost straight away, even though it's just five minutes past eight in the evening. Oof, almost at an end to this massive, time-consuming road trip with a trailer. Alright, see you for the summary. Thank you.